All right, kicking off update video number 15. Uh, meant to get this video out a lot sooner, but had some delays with uh, getting proper parts. Uh, I ordered some incorrect parts. I upgraded uh, my computer and video editing software, hoping to improve the quality of my videos and stuff a little bit. That stuff delayed me and I uh, was also away on a family vacation. Got quite a bit of stuff to put into this video. I've uh, been getting to use the truck a lot. Uh, finally got everything all finished up with the turret, but I am not going to cover the M66 turret in this video. I am going to make a whole separate video going over my turret setup and the 1919 A4 and everything. So I'm going to make, you, you'll see a separate upload for that if you're interested in that. I just broke 15,000 miles today actually driving this to work. I'll start off with a whole bunch of the little stuff and I'll kind of work my way up to the bigger stuff from there. All right, let's kick off by just going over a couple of the small things uh, in the cab and stuff like that. So I didn't really need it, but I found these and uh, they're a much more heavy duty handle. It's fully made of metal. Uh, I'd never seen them before. See they stick out a lot more, they're a lot more robust and in my last update video I'd gotten like the plastic covers that went over and I really wasn't happy with how they stayed on there. Uh, this driver's side always was a little sticky because I have the aluminum handle and it just kind of rubs on it a little bit. But I got this one over here too. They're pretty robust. It's pretty cool. Mackie, will you show me the part that we put on together a while ago? That's right, we put that on. We put that on right there. Yeah, it's not really it's, that's right, it's not leaking. Mm -hmm. You help me with all the tools to put it on, huh? Yeah. But yeah, I, I put this on there. The reason why I changed this out from the one that I had talked about in a previous video was once I got the CTIS working, since it had the smaller orifice traveling sh through this, it worked, but it took a long time for the tires to fill up and I actually air down and air up quite a bit going on and off road. So I had found this one on eBay and I believe it's for an MRAP. I didn't realize it, but it actually has metric threads. So when I went to go thread in brass, I actually ended up stripping the fittings on a little bit and then they leaked. So because this was steel and these were brass, it actually conformed the threads to the brass. So I took them off with the threads needing to be changed. I used some of this mix-in JB Weld to make sure that it sealed up and didn't back out. Um, I know you guys are probably cringing at that a little bit. It's worked really well. This has been on the truck actually for a long time. And it has not been an issue. It hasn't leaked and has a much higher flow. The only thing about it is it has a little bit lower of a rating. I believe it's 80 PSI instead of the 90 PSI where it opens up. Right around the time where the alarm shuts off in the truck is where this releases and allows air to flow to like open up the cabin stuff. And there is a little Allen screw underneath to adjust it. I haven't messed with it because it works. It's not that big of a deal to me for what it is. So I'm happy with it. It lets a lot more air flow through. 
and it doesn't give this crazy whistling sound because of the small orifice. I'll splice in a video of the crazy noise I was getting when filling the tires right now. This. Last thing I noticed too with that new valve is uh, as you're filling up the tires from a really low pressure, the radiator fan and the uh, cab air suspension aren't affected. Uh, I think it's because that valve doesn't end up closing and then they don't deflate and then that doesn't cause the fan to engage. With the other valve, uh, what would happen is as it was filling, because everything needed to work so hard, the radiator fan would end up kicking in and then the cab would keep deflating and inflating. But uh, not that that was a huge deal, but it's just nice that that doesn't happen. So just wanted to note that, but uh, that was a good fix. And if for some reason that ends up failing, uh, I will note uh, down the road in a future update, let you guys know, but I think it's gonna be good. So to help with the uh, throttle cable sticking issue, I replaced these springs up here. I actually found my internal one was broken. Uh, I don't know how I didn't notice that. It is something that I look at. Uh, I just guessed that it happened to broken. When I checked it, it was. So I'd ordered what looked to be close, a spring set, and it wasn't exact. It is on there, and uh, it's better than having a broken one. It did help, it didn't fully improve it. I mean, common problem with these is the throttle cable is just old. It gets dry, and it's a little sticky. Right up here on the upper right is a picture of the box that this spring came out of with the old one in it, and I'll put a link in the description. Here's another thing that I got. I'm not really gonna talk about installing it and stuff like that, but it's a VRC 110 mount for my radio. It's gonna take me a while to figure out some of the wire modification in this to work with my uh, Triumph Industries 152 replica radio, but it does obviously integrate with the radio wire that comes off the truck and then it charges the battery. So at minimum it does that and it holds the radio securely. This has an amplifier on it and then it will integrate with vehicle intercom system or speakers. That's something that I'm gonna slowly do, but I got my hands on this, which is kind of hard to get. So that's cool. Is that cool, Sydney? <laughs> Not through. These Dorman body panel push pin retainers work pretty well on the door panels. Next thing on the list is uh, up front there. I'm gonna take the old dilapidated grill off and uh, got the new style to put on. Tools for this job aren't very extensive. Uh, Phillips screwdriver and pliers, in my instance, for the taking off of the grill. A uh, half inch wrench and ratchet with socket for changing out the uh, number plate. And then I'm using an adjustable and a hammer to kind of fix some of the dents and bends that are in the metal one. So this thing has got a couple little bends to it right along the edges. You can kind of see it better like that, for example, uh, down here and stuff. So I'm gonna spend a little time and try to bang them out before putting it on. Uh, I'm not really too worried about the discoloration and stuff. It is what it is. ready to put on. Alright, there it is installed. I didn't really bother painting it and stuff because I don't care too much about that. Uh, might eventually 
do it. I'm sure when I pressure wash or whatever, a lot of the grime and stuff like that will come off. But uh, bending it, bending the edges and stuff, neatened it up quite a bit. Uh, yeah, small improvement. So you can see, it actually is a little excessive today. Uh, I started the truck quite a few times though, letting this thing fully cycle, so it probably caught a whole bunch of it, but spitting out a lot of moisture, and what it is, is it's kind of like whitish, so it's oil coming from the compressor. Before assuming that the compressor's bad, because I build air pretty quickly, there's a little check valve that you can put in up there that's supposed to help from allowing just bypass oil to get up here. I'm gonna try installing that, and then I'm gonna do the service on this with changing the packet and the O-rings and stuff. It's worth a try, it's not very expensive. And it's something that the new compressors when ordered from Haldex that they're coming installed with now. Here's some of the materials that I used. That's the actual kit. And my kit was missing some gaskets, so I this is what I had left over of it. I had some gasket making material. And then I also ended up needing to use a little 1 8 NPT 90 because for some reason on mine, the vent ended up hitting the bolt. Uh, I probably could have did away with just taking off the lock washer, but I didn't want to do that. Just decided to use that. Um, I don't have a part number for this because I just had this laying around, but I figured I would show you because there's a bunch of different versions of these. Mine kind of had this rounded backing and it gave it just enough clearance it almost touches the bolt. I did put a dab of blue Loctite on the end of the bolts. Quick splice in, I ended up ordering them, I'm gonna install them, but I'm not gonna show it. The gasket that goes behind the governor, this is your part number for it. And the gaskets that I was missing that goes between the check valve, this is the part number for it. This is what I use for the tools. Um, it's half inch for the bolts, ratchet, and regular wrench. Uh, 7 16 was to take the little vent off for me. Ended up using the adjustable just to be able to do some of the fittings and things. Flathead to get the uh, hose clamp off. Some of the fittings were stuck on there pretty good. And then also to help make the gasket and things. Take off the old material. And this is actually sitting here for something else. It does come with an instruction sheet that's... Uh, pretty straightforward. It's got markings and it seems to be that there's only really one way that it can be installed. There's the compressor and it goes behind, you know, in between the compressor and this. So we took the inlet thing all the way off and cleaning the gasket off. So this kit, like you can see in the picture, was supposed to come with three gaskets and I guess that's for the different applications it can be installed on. There was one in there. So instead of, I ordered this part a while ago, it's beyond the time where I could call and complain to them, hey, I'm missing a gasket. So we're just gonna make one out of some gasket material that I have. <laughs> Looks acceptable. I'll take it. So in case this piece comes apart in yours, because it's assembled and shipping, the notch it talks about in the instructions is this notch. Put it face down, take the little steel plate, put it in, and then you'll see there's a little bow. Put that face down. Sorry, doing this one-handed is a little tricky. And then you're going to put a gasket, this is your inlet, with, on my truck, which is the blue hose that's going out to the air filter. That notch is going to be towards the rear of the truck, like that. It's 
gonna go that way. And the idea is, is when it starts pulling air in, that little metal flap is gonna bend open and the air is gonna travel around it to get sucked into the compressor. And then the gasket we made is gonna make up for the one that we're missing. And because these holes are tight, what I'm hoping will happen is we put those longer bolts in and kind of force them through those tighter holes and it will hold everything together so I could put it all in as one piece. And it says 110 to 150 inch pounds. this installed but the issue I'm having now is the little vent that was goes right here or any sort of adapter I'm trying to come up with it this gets in the way of it All right, after getting out of that uh, 106 degree South Texas summer sun, I dug out of the parts bin a 90 degree fitting and I really didn't think it was gonna work, but it gave me just enough clearance so that way I could mount it and I needed to remove the governor. I was hoping I did not need to move the governor. A couple of the other guys that make the videos on these trucks, they removed theirs to do it. But for some reason with mine, putting all this stuff on, there was no way because this say if this was the bolt you know bolting this on it started making this bend so that means that this vent would not open and close the way it should it was either going to be stuck one way or the another so anyway uh one thing that did happen when i did that it ripped the gasket so that may leak a little bit i'm gonna have to order that part number and what i might do is actually find out what that gasket is since i'm going to take this apart anyway and actually get the proper gasket to put in there too. Installing that check valve didn't solve my issue of getting the moisture purging out of the air dryer, but uh, it was worth a try. So it probably means that uh, the compressor just needs to be rebuilt, new rings and stuff put in it. Maybe one of you guys watching this, it'll be helpful to you, solve your problem. It's worth the try for the little effort that it takes. Up next on the list, it's gonna be doing the service on the uh, purest air dryer here. A torque wrench, regular ratchet, an extension, and a 15 millimeter deep socket did the trick for me. All right, here's the service kit for the purest air dryer. Uh, it obviously comes with the desiccant kit, then there's four bolts, a couple O-rings, and then like a little thing of grease and an instruction. Seems like it's a pretty straightforward process. Basically, you undo the cover, uh, press in this to the metal cover, uh, replace the O-rings, put a little grease on those O-rings, and then use the new bolts and torque them down to the spec. Definitely a bunch of oil build up in there, so I'm just gonna use a rag and clean it up. So there's definitely a lot of crap in there, clean it out, but in the aluminum casing, there's the two little nipples. That's what the little cams, or whatever you wanna call them, line up with. Line it up. And then there's a little rubber spring. So you push it down and rotate it. And when it's new, it doesn't really need that much force. I don't think there's any.
any specific way that this clamp or orientation that the metal housing needs to go. Obviously just the bolts need to line up. The o-ring that comes goes on the actual piece that's still on the truck. It's very obvious where it goes. You'll see that that one that's on here gets pretty pancaked. Just pick that off, make sure you lubricate it before you put it back on. All right, that wraps that up besides testing. Just wanted to note something that happened to me. You could actually see it much better in the camera with the light. See that little line right there? Uh, pretty sure that's a crack. Heard it when I was torquing it down. Uh, I thought maybe I misread the paperwork. I did not. I think my torque wrench is going bad. There's been a couple times where I thought that it really wasn't clicking when it should have been. I think it's time to throw that thing away. But uh, I'm hoping it's not gonna leak. I'm gonna test it here. It didn't leak, so that's good. All wrapped up. That's a wrap for this one. Uh, I do actually have some more to go over. I actually had my first roadside breakdown, but uh, that'll be in the next update video. Uh, nobody got hurt or anything, so it's good. But uh, see you next time. Hopefully you like the new editing.